All right, today's video is for a friend, fellow trader, who has not witnessed a having before and is just starting to get into trading finance major and they're asking me some questions about like, can you look at like Ondo, O-N-D-O. And while this will not be an exhaustive list of how to choose something, it's how I filter out. I start to grade something like an A trade, B trade, C trade, you know, lotto ticket or like a blue chip type thing. And something else you have to keep in mind is that while all this will help you get a few points and edge on other traders that don't really do their research or don't know anything about a chart, this is only when things are acting rational. If emotion takes over, none of the rational matters. Like there's certain pain points and pressure points that just move the market past the realm of reality and stupid. And if you trade long enough, you'll see something go a thousand percent and you're like what on earth is holding this piece of shit up there's no value there there's nothing there's nothing to hold this up what's holding that up at that point generally is investor sentiment and the fact that whoever is running the headline because the headline is definitely a point um and a, a kpi metric that if you have enough eyeballs say like you're kramer and you're like yeah i'm super bullish on btc today and that guy has you know 500 million followers and he hits the buy button he potentially has 500 million people that believe in him. They can move the market and they can move it past stupid. They don't need any logical reason because a lot of people don't take the time to do the research. They generally invest in somebody else, kind of like my friend today said, hey, what do you think of X, Y, Z? So I'm gonna show him how I would look at it versus just saying like, yeah, it looks cool. That way he can make his own decision in the future. You know, maybe he gets his own little cheat sheet, his own question and decides what's right for him and decides what's right for you and other traders out there. But this is how I'd go about it. So. Generally, I'm going to pop into a market and I'm going to see a couple things like what's the strength of the overall market in general? Like, are we in an uptrend? Are we in a downtrend? What's in general going on? So let's just take a look at like BTC. So in general, like pretty much any idiot can see like we're overall in an uptrend, right? Obviously there's some, you know, so there's pullbacks, but in general, if we just start to, you know, zoom in here, how long have we been in an uptrend? We've been in an uptrend for, you know, since November, 2022, right? And what we're really doing is revisiting the old uptrend that gave away, started to break down, found a bottom. Now we're there. Now we're at basically the point of a cup and a handle. Well, what's really interesting though is back here, this wasn't a halving. This is, right? So we are now getting less issue of BTC. There's more things going on. Altcoin season is going to come in. So that's one of those KPIs and those metrics you need to know. So of things that can move the market, headlines, halvings, um, war, you know, we got war with Iran going on that made the market tank to the day. That's what this little pullback was when everyone's like, Oh God, the market might be crashing and it can still pull back to like, you know, 20, 38,000, uh, 24,000, 50,000. Like there's a lot of like potential spots, but realistically right there, those two little double dips for right now in the short term, as long as that mark holds at 59, we're probably good because we just have It'll probably revisit test, play around a little bit, maybe try to shake people out down to 52, and we'll probably just march on up to like 120. This run should take us probably to like 240 to 280 in BTC in general. Depending on what happens on a presidential election coming up too, if they're good or bad for markets, then we should see an extended bull run. If they're bad for markets, then, well, you'll just have to kind of like take that in consideration. So overall, first thing we want to do is look at direction. How are you doing overall? Well, since inception, hey man, we're up with some crazy swings. That means, well, what could happen in the future? It could probably repeat. So what happened from here to here? Well, there's like a 94% dropout. And up here, you know, there's like a 94% pullback. Like there was, you know, crazy amounts from tops to the pullbacks. It was, it was excessive. So if you're super greedy and you think it's just always gonna go just like this, you're fooling yourself. It's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. There's cycles. And right now we're starting a new cycle because of a halving. That being said, let's pull back off that a little bit. So we're like, all right, in general, the market is up sideways and looking at stabilizing and possibly starting a new bull run. Okay, so what does that mean for our alts? Well, for our alts, after everything crashed the other day, like 30%, which is kind of normal in crypto, it was a decent pullback. That gave everybody a shot to get in. That gave people an excuse for headlines to be like, oh my God, is it time to get in? It's a great price. And now people look and they're like, oh, how much is everything up? Ooh, Alf's up 49% but it just super crashed the other day, right? Like 35%, so it's recovering. But that gives people that are onboarding a chance to get in to good projects, whatever. So my friend wants to know about on there. Let's see what's new though, real quick, right? New markets, is it in a new market? No, it's not a new market, so it's unestablished. Um, kind of a believer in Arkham right there. I've got some in Arkham, but let's just see. 
on do. Would I be interested in his play? On do in. So it's not a new. So it's in the uh, regular old USD market. And there's a lot of other exchanges besides Coinbase. Like this is not going to have history only going back so far, but that doesn't mean that's where it started. So sometimes they go to, you know, coin market cap and other places to look how, how much further back it goes. It looks like I've already marked this play up before. So even though I don't remember marking it up, we did probably in a video somewhere. That's a beautiful uptrend. Now, if I saw that, I'm like, Oh, what are we in? We're clearly in an uptrend in an uptrend of the overall market being an uptrend. I don't know what sector Ondu is in yet, so I don't know who its competitors are. Is it brand new technology? Is it old technology getting ready to get bumped off? Those are key points to look at too. So if you've got a pen and a pad, you're going to want to write down what market sector are you in? Who are your competitors? Are you new tech? Are you old tech? What sector are you serving? And what is a potential ability to onboard people? Is this a video game? If it's a video game, like how good is it? If it's, you know, decentralized finance, like who's a competitor and like, what are they offering different? And what's the potential onboard? What chain are they running on? All that matters to me, right? If this runs on some shitty chain, like I don't want it. Like it's probably, you know, like, you know, a bad dap. Like I don't think much of Cardano and plays like that. So, you know, like look at, um, Ethereum classic, right? We'll just real quick. We'll pause. We'll come back to this. So we can see this is in an uptrend, but to further illustrate points of like, what chain is it on? Well, let's look at Ethereum, right? Ethereum is, you know, 3,207 with a rotation of $142 million and 44,000 ETH alone in 24 hours on, on Coinbase alone. That's not across the ecosystem. That's just here. But let's look at ETC Classic. <laughs> Why is ETC Classic only 2811? They're exact same thing, except for when they split, they stayed proof of work and true to not being rolled back. Vitalik, the one time he rolled it back to stop that hack, apparently everyone decided that was the better thing they wanted. Even though the whole thing about blockchain is that it's immutable, no rolling back, no whatever, he rolled it back. But guess what? He's a developer that everybody likes. He's a developer that people trust. ETC? He's not part of that project. They just took his work up to that point and stepped off 1.8 million, 63,000 ETC traded. What's ETC have chain wise, DAP wise, project wise, what is building on ETC? Nothing. Technically it isn't worth $28 because there's nothing on it. Another case in point, just like that about chains and level ones and who's building on what is BTC right, is worth 66,000, has a super strong hash, everybody loves it, but there were some arguments a while back, right, between BTC and BCH. How come BCH is only worth 510 and is the exact same code pre-fork? All they changed was like a block size, but that didn't bring no one to BCH. No one liked the idea, so when it split, you can see that BTC was a winner and there was also a BTC SV, which is one of you listed on here, I can't even pull it up. That's worth like 38 bucks. So you have to be careful which protocol you're on. Think of it like a shopping mall. You know, if you're like, um, well, I'm in Southern California, so it's hard to, you know, wherever you are in the world though, you know, pick like your big, most popular destination of shopping mall. The one that's got like all the amenities, all the new hot stuff. You got your Cinnabons, your Missfield cookies. When you go down there, you're like, whoa, the big brands are here, right? The big brands like Gap, people that matter. And then you go to like your offbeat mall. Your mall was built 40, 50 years ago. It's struggling. It was the first mall in the city and it's like, got the dollar movie theater and all the shit that nobody really wants. Like that's ETC, right? It might have the ability to do everything that the mall can do, but just for whatever reason, like it's fallen out of favor. Once you're out of favor, you're kind of out of favor in crypto stocks, whatever. You're just kind of dead. It's hard to resurgence that. So first and foremost, you want to be on a chain that other people want, right? And then you want to be someplace where it's got good developer tools. So BCH might have great developer tools, but for whatever reason, it can't garner people to it. So all these great things that are mostly moving right here, most of these things are on um, Ethereum. You're going to find out like all these AI tokens and gaming tokens and all these things are issued on there. Now, Kui is issued on AVAX, Avalanche. I like them. They're a fast network. They're upcoming. AVAX has potential to do, you know, basically what Ethereum did. It has a chance to go from like nine, 10 bucks up to, you know, four or five, $10,000 but it has to interest people to come on there. It has to interest builders. It has to be a name that people get behind and they're like, Oh, heard about avalanche and then attract dApps and builders because if not, it's just a dead ecosystem. It's a mall with nobody in it. It's like no Miss Fields cookies, no movie theaters. You know, there's just these empty stalls that, well, there's just no reason to go there. 
So let's pop over and look at what Ondo actually does, because I don't know. Next, I like to look at market cap, advancing or retracting, 2.43 trillion. We were like 2.69 before that dip. That dip right before having to, we were fear and greed of like 89. Um, 60 is a little little high, but it's starting to attract me. It's just kind of cooling off, but that's settled for a few days. And we had dropped back down to like 2.2. So we've retraced and we're recovering. Um, if you look at like BTC dominance, 53%, Ethereum 19 or 15.9, um, Ethereum gas is very low. So those are all like pretty you know decent things. So I'll pop over here too and be like, Hey, in the last seven days, what's advancing? Like anything crazy. Oh, a meme coin, um, near protocol, SCI, which I do hold. I like Sheeb, mm, Pepe, SCI, SCI. Okay. Like and Floki, right? Those are your things that are really advancing. It's a lot of meme coining right now stuff, um, with a few other things mixed in. Not too bad. So let's go and on do. Who are they and what do they do? Are they a primary chain? All right, so they're 82 cents. Not too terrible, like they're affordable. This is the one day I like to go through like, you know, the one month, see what's been going on for the last month. Last month, they're uh, between $1 and 63 cents. So they're mid range. Basically not really going anywhere, just kind of bouncing around. Now this depends. Is this a short-term play, a long-term play? How long do you plan on holding it? Are you trying to like max this out? Do you believe in the tech? Why are you trading? Are you trading because it's moving? Like all that is very different between a swing trade and a day trade. So as far as like, I have to decide too, like, is this something I want to put in my long-term hold? Is this where I want to tie up cash? Well, if I don't think it has a chance to 100X or something like that, I mean, I don't really want to hold it. If it's going to take three years to go from 80 cents to five bucks, like that's pretty worthless. That being said, 500% return is not bad, but can't you do better like over like, you know, 10% here, 20% there, um, then dump it all into one thing. So let's see if it even has potential to move. It's low on the all charts was uh, 8 cents and it went up to a dollar and it did that in you know, the last four months. So it looks like it's, you know, something newer, decent. Now here's a big thing too. Where is it listed? Being listed and having volume really matters because if you're listed on just one exchange and like a bunch of DEXs, you don't have a lot of stability yet. And that also means if you do get listed someplace else, that can help with one of those, you know, key performance indicators that when it gets listed, one, it gets more eyeballs, more money and more exposure. Cause like I'm, I'm in America now. I can't trade on like Binance. So a lot of stuff that I could make a lot more money in, I can't touch if they would just remove that regulation. Then you'd see a lot of coins that get listed on Binance go even further because there'd be a lot more exposure to American dollars. So it's on Bybit eh, whatever, I'm not crazy about Bybit. KuCoin's cool. They've been around for a while. So just cumulatively, it's on a, a few top three exchanges. Uniswap's got some volume Kraken, you know, whatever. Um, but it's not on Binance yet. So it's got a lot, a lot further to run if it can get listed. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, this gets dropped on Binance, you know, add, add 20, 30% to it. I like to look at circulating supply. Max supply looks like there's none. So I don't know enough about their mechanisms. The other thing you want to see too, is they have any burn mechanisms. There's any way to reduce the outstanding supply and can they continue to issue? Is there just a max cap? Possibly we should look at their website as well, but let's drop down and look at the news. What's going on just recently. And this is their opinion. Obviously best cryptocurrencies. They just write news to write news. They got to have something to talk about whether it's, Positive or negative, but this is that whole thing like, does Injective have a lot of readers? And if everything else was stable, could they induce panic or fear? Could they take you out of a logical standpoint of like, well, they're worth this, they have this much issue, eh, places at around $4. Does these people have enough followers to go buy it no matter what, to push it back, push it past reason? And if you get something pushed past reason, sell that shit. Take advantage of the top because it's not going to last. So let's drop down to Ondu. Ondu recently announced this partnership with Noble, an asset issuance chain to introduce its tokenized U.S. Treasury offerings to the Cosmos Atom ecosystem. Uh, that's what we're talking about on chain where they're issued Cosmos on Atom. I don't know. We should go over and look at Cosmos Atom and see what chance they've got of surviving. I'd be a whole lot happier if this was issued on like Ethereum or... Yeah, you know, Avalanche or something. I don't know. I can't remember if I'm a fan of Cosmos or not. Probably not because it doesn't really, doesn't really move my brain. Um, this move aims to expand the accessibility of Ondu's products to a wider audience. So we just talked about, right? The wider the audience, the more something will be worth. 
for the crypto space. The first asset to be launched through this collaboration is USDY. We've got enough of that shit. We don't need any more of it. A tokenized note backed by short-term U.S. Treasuries offering 5.2 annual yield scheduled for release by the end of the second quarter. USDY is already available on Ethereum, Solana, Mantle, and SUI blockchains. Okay, so in that case, never mind. I take that back about Adam. I guess it runs other places as well. Um, I don't know. Not terrible. I just don't like what it's being backed by and what it's doing and what it's after. It seems like it's trying to become some kind of stable coin. In general, uh, after writing the Andu tokens price 81 cents, 24 hour trading volume of 1.32 billion, it has motion, so that's good. I'd grade it like in the B the B area. Uh, the token experience an intraday increase of 7%, current sentiment towards price optimistic, blah, 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 blah. Demonstrates high liquidity based on market cap over the last 30 days, 15 green days, oh, positive. Yeah, that that's that's cool and all, but that's from like for a day trader. So let's go back to. Let's just go to their paper, their analytics, just real quick before we pop out of here. Yeah, anything with BitBoy in it, you can just go ahead and tank that. That dude needs to just be pushed out of the space. Okay, tokens are entrusted with shaping the future of Andu DAO so that it continues to pursue its mission of democratizing access to institutional grade finance. Do we really need something like that in this space? How credible are these guys? Why are they the guys to do it? Can anybody do it better? So now we know what they do, right? We know what sector they're in. Their sector is a DAO that wants to bring tokenized futures. Last time I checked, the SEC wasn't big on it. They they were pretty against it. And I don't remember their stance ever changing. Though it's softening towards crypto, I'm not a big fan of this. I think there's better plays out there. However, if like all the stars aligned, and you know, it's a rocket shot, obviously, but is it a rocket shot today? No, there's probably better things you could do in the meantime. Let's look at their webpage. A new era of financial inclusivity on chain. It's a lot of buzzword shit. Yeah. Bank of America, coin gecko, blah, blah, blah. They could have wrote any article on there and gotten included in that. It's not that hard. Andu Foundation's mission to usher a new era of financial inclusivity and market efficiency through on-chain institutional groups. It's a lot of double talk. Our mission is to usher in a new era. Like, that's everybody's mission, dude. Financial inclusivity. Like, see, I don't like that buzzword of inclusivity. Like, they're trying too hard. And market efficiency. Like, if it's an efficient market, like, where's the money in it? Like, an efficient market isn't where you make your money. An inefficient market is where you make your money in volatility. Uh, on chain institutional grade, and they're talking about bonds too. And like, <laughs> how stable are bonds? I don't know. It sounds like a really solid project that's going to do exactly what it stays to do. And you know, I don't know, reminds you of like XRP or Ripple. Do I ever see this thing going to like a thousand dollars? Yeah, probably not. I don't see this thing going 100x. Possibly could might make me really eat my words. I'll probably come back in a year and it'll be 80 bucks or something, which maybe is fair for this kind of token. But what does the Andu token really get you for holding it? I mean, what do you get for holding on new token? Right. If they've already got it. Uh, let's see. Let's see the blog. Campaign to see major upgrade. We need to track your progress and climb the leaderboard. Oh, you can earn some Andu points. Yeah, we've gamified owning Andu. Like, this is not, I don't know. It's a pretty basic website for someone that's trying to revolutionize and inclusivity everybody of, you know, financial products. Um, I like to see who's behind the project. That's something that I'm not seeing. <laughs> Governance. The Andu Dow. Governance process, proposal thresholds, voting period three days, quorum, time lock, the Andu token, but no Andu team. Flux finance governance, two stage chain. I mean, yeah, like every other DAO, what do you flip and do? Oh, following insights developed by the DAO, the restrictions on transferring the Andu token were lifted. Enabling free movement of the token is January 18, 2024. 
unlock the token, but establish a structural distribution schedule for the other token, allow the community consensus. So that goes back to probably we we're looking at about what circulated supply versus total supply. So they've started their unlock, their investor allocations. So it was one year lock plus 18 month release. Looks like they've changed that or this is what they changed to. I'd have to look at a little, little closer, but I don't really care because I don't see a team behind it. I don't like it. So for me, like that gets about a big fat fucking F because for all I know, this could be someone in the space that I think is a dipshit or someone that's had other projects that probably shouldn't be handling a project. Like the Luna guy, like who's to say this isn't someone from like Luna? This is bullshit. A new era of financial inclusivity. Ah, just that buzzword alone is dropping it down a letter grade for me. I just, I don't like the way it's written. I don't like the website. It's just not enough for something that's talking about being so progressive and advanced and, you know, trying to use the U.S.'s name and U.S. treasuries. They're trying really hard to authenticate themselves of, it's kind of like when you see rappers talking about like, oh, I drink crystal and I shoot this particular grade of nine millimeter, like, Okay, that's nice. You dropped a bunch of brands that have already made it. So you're going to drop the U.S. name brand treasury and you're going to tokenize them. Like, they'll tokenize themselves if they want to. So I don't. they don't need you guys to do it. Thanks. Um, Andy more or less can fuck off, in my opinion. I don't like Andy. I don't like what Andy's about. They'll probably still go up because a lot of people will look at that stuff. They won't do the due diligence and it'll sound really cool and buzzword. And they'll be like, oh my God, this could really go to the moon. And it'll probably go to 18 bucks. Maybe it'll be 80 bucks in a year. But in general, when I put my money here, nah, more exciting things. I don't like the sector they're in. I don't like what they're trying to compete. I don't like what they're about, particularly. Um, it's just, I don't know, not a project for me anyway. But that's how I'd go through it. So I'd grade it like, are they on a reputable chain? Yeah, they are. Do they have any support behind them? Yeah, they got Bank of America and all that. I have to go look. And then again, also, so they were going to be on the Atom Network, right? What do we really think of Adam? I mean, Cosmos itself was only eight eighty seven. And see, Cosmos was forty at one time, so maybe, you know, on the ten billion market cap over there, uh, maybe eighty bucks is fair for some people. Like that's amazing. Look, Binance, you know, Bybit, HTX, Upbit, OKX, Coinbase, KuCoin, Kraken. You know, these these guys are places they should be. But what is their big mission? Like, what are they all about? Build on the interchain, reduce cost, scale effortless, and make your business come alive. Hundreds of companies, like who? Use Cosmos SDK to build fast care blockchain, right? This is what we're talking about. Who's building on it? So, Ondu is building on it. Near zero fees, transactional rates, right? So if you're a, <laughs> if you're a validator, there's not very much money in there for you because it's near zero fees. So their validators who are running the chain are basically getting fucked. They're probably going to go someplace else and put their hash power somewhere else because why wouldn't they? Smart contracts done smarter. Oh, God. Okay. Uh, interchain stack. Well, they operate across multiple ecosystems if it if it actually works. And if it does, then that's pretty, that's pretty nice. That's just kind of like um, Atomic Swap. Global digital economy. More buzzwords. Stack trusted by builders. Says who? Everyone builds on Ethereum and Solana. I don't know. Who is their team? Fuck me. All right. Well, places that don't have pictures of their teams are already like a negative for me because if I see like a whole bunch of shady guys that look like they're getting beat the shit out of in a basement in China, <laughs> I'm, I'm not investing my money there. Same thing. If I see a whole bunch of Russians in sunglasses that look like, you know, they just took some pictures out on the balcony, not investing. Like this is not professional enough for me. Like they're basically about to skate with your shit. Mm, let's go to the about. We're building the internet of blockchains. Sure. So is everybody else, dude. How are you guys different? Do crew validators. Oh, stake. 75 million stakes is not that much. Injective. Eh, hmm. 
I mean, the more you dig into it, like they have a decent ecosystem, but is it like, wow, that's the ecosystem? Like, no, not right now. It's pretty lackluster in general. Aha, here we go. Boy, buried. Clemens Carpetetti, CEO, CTO, DevOps lead and strategic lead. Christian Ruff, Russ, CEO, CFO. Uh, Sonia. She looks like she's about to fuck somebody up, dude. She looks angry. Andre Kerschlegel, advisor of communications. Who's this Ruski? This little beatnik 1920s anti fash unionizing the working man for the factory. Mr. Simon Ross, advisor of DevOps. No thanks. Paul Leonard blockchain he's the most innocent looking of all alex so fucked up he can't even throw a real picture up he's he's just got to show off that he's a real a real crypto defi summer nft guy with his awesome hand-drawn site reliability engineer in his one name and mr q project governance lead and support oh man um fuck this project too honestly uh, fuck that project. All right. So fuck Cosmos. Fuck Adam. Fuck everything built on Adam. Adam's a dead chain in my opinion. Or at least that group right there having the ability to bring people on like Vitalik does is about fucking zero compared to Vitalik. And the people on Solana. The people on Solana and Ethereum are fucking great. The people on ETH Classic are like those guys. I mean... Unfortunately, like this is a popularity contest right now. And if you don't have the popularity to bring people on in devs, you've got nothing to offer people for your chain. Your chain is worthless. It's transacting nothing. You've got nothing for your validators because nothing's being ran. So basically you're a failing mall. So in my opinion, um, yeah, fuck everything on Cosmos pretty much. That could change in a few months, but I would give a reason for it. But as of right now, nah, fuck Cosmos, fuck on, dude, fuck all that. Unless you're just super dedicated, but if that's the case, if you're dedicated to something like that style, look at who his competitor is and see if there's not something better on a better chain being built. And there probably is. So quick recap, if you want anything framework-wise, paperwork-wise, I'm going to put that down on like how I look at stuff and grade it. Easy, I'll make one, throw it out there, but it's pretty simple. I just talked the whole video of it, of looking at the overall market, the sector, what can potentially move it. And again, all that is is logical right everything i just said is the logical pricing points of you know how much could this potentially be worth based on attraction of user base again that doesn't make any difference though if someone with a million 15 million youtube followers tomorrow gets on and says man i love cosmos cosmos is just gonna blow the fuck up can it sustain probably not if someone jumps on tomorrow again you know like Kramer with 500 million followers and says, man, I'm all about on. Do I sold my house? That kind of conviction is going to move a lot of people with sentiment, not logic. Logically, what will Cosmos and Adam and all that stuff still be worth? Exactly what we were talking about. Like what's it worth from key performance indicators, not sentiment. So you get your little logical cheat sheet down. You look it over, you look at what it's worth. And then inside of that range, you look at and go, if it's below that range, it's probably a decent buy unless it's dying off. It means it's undervalued. If you look at one day and you're like, why is it 15 X and running? It's just a freight train. Jump on and trade the hype. That means, you know, get in, get out type of thing. Those are like the, the parameters of what I look for, for trades. Good luck.